Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Welcome back to the channel, part 12 now of this uh, build of this lovely, lovely kit from Airfix. This is the 124 scale Spitfire Mark 9, just in case you've been sleeping under a rock or something. Um, so yeah, part 12 already and, you know, it's lots of parts because I like to show everyone everything. And everyone likes me showing them everything rather than just doing like a, you know, here's a sprue, here's a finished model sort of thing. Um... Right, so I want to start off today just with a couple of questions that have been asked. Today is the 22nd of December 2022, so almost Christmas, and I just want to start off with a couple of things that people have been asking, a couple of questions, a couple of points and everything. So basically, um, we have here the model as I've got it and the fuselage is built up, all of the tail feathers are done there in the box, wings are done and everything, engine mount is in, the engine bearer, sorry, is in. Uh, but the engine bearer is not glued in case it needs any adjustment. I don't think it will, but just in case. Um, so, a couple of things that have been raised. Um, I'm being accused of hating on Airfix. Uh, I do not hate Airfix. Not, I have never hated Airfix, okay? Um, I've had my concerns when I had a complaint about the spider webbing in clear parts, and they just came back to me and said, yeah, that's, that's part of the process. All right, <laughs> fine. Um... And I didn't think that was a very good response, to be quite honest with you. But Airfix seem to have changed. They seem to be a different company now. Um, when you contact them, they respond. Uh, it used to be the other didn't respond. It took a long time. Something has happened in their in their company. I don't know what it is, but something has happened. Whatever it is, it's for the better. So um, there we go. I've also complained about their blue tack plastic, which I don't think anybody likes. This plastic is a million times better. It's still on the soft side, but it's beautiful to work with. It's very, very nice indeed. And if they made every kit out of this plastic from now on, in fact, if every manufacturer made their kit from this plastic, I'd be more than happy. So it's lovely, okay? Um, and as far as the design of the kit goes, I think the design is absolutely fantastic. I just think there could have been more positivity in the location of a couple of parts particularly in the wing area uh, it's a little bit floaty but um you know at the end of the day it goes together and it's absolutely fine talking about the wings um some people have said that all the work i've done with the wings <clears throat> is unnecessary well i'll never know that unless i build another if i build another one without doing all that then we'll see you come to fit the fuselage and it won't fit but I know that a couple of people have commented that they're really enjoying this build and they know of another couple of, or, or at least one other person has said they know of other people that have come unstuck. So I don't know in what way or whatever. There's obviously builds going on everywhere on YouTube and forums and God knows what all over the world. But um, certainly in this country, I'm not sure it's available all over the world yet. But um, basically, I think the what I've done, I've filmed this as I'm going um you will see some people talk about models after they've already built one so it's like it's just natural that they know so i'm doing this as i build it so the work i've done on the wing you know it could prove to be unnecessary later on who knows but i'm just showing you everything i find as i go through some people may be considering that as i'm hating on airfix i'm not i'm just talking about the kit and the, the way i think it should go together um the build process i keep changing the build process Yes, I build the model in the process I think would suit my style of building better. And I think it's sort of getting rid of any issues that could happen. Um, and I'll refer to this in a minute. This is the book by, I've, I've done a review of it. I did a review of this book the day I received it, uh, which I think was about the 15th or the 18th of December. It's not, it was only a few days ago. And this is a book, you know, it's actually produced by Airfix. And the guy, I think his name is Shane, was it, who built this. Um, you know, he's a modeler. He knows what he's doing. He's a big, big time at Airfix. So, you know, um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But people have also said that they think I've been over clamping this and doing too much work with pulling it here and pulling it there and stress and this, that and the other. I can assure you there's no stress in here at all. It's just, it's just clamped to hold it. Uh, if you remember, I said I had this wing panel here seem to be a little flat. This wing here seemed to be a little curved um, because I had a bump in here. If you remember, I had to clamp all this down because the paneling was all lifting up and it didn't want to sit down. So I had to glue all along here, whereas this one just pulled down without any glue in at all. Lo and behold, we look in the book and we can see here 
if you look there you can see that rib is lifted up exactly the same so there we go um, and what I found was the gun cover didn't fit if I didn't have it glued down flat so I think probably what it is the ribs are the correct shape I think the wings are possibly a bit um, a bit distorted which is understandable it's a huge piece of plastic it's not very thick and it's got holes in the middle of it so you think about all the shrinkage that's going on here in, in an, you know after it's cast or after it's molded it's pulling always so you know it's they've done a fantastic job with a fairly large panel we all know if Kitty Hawk had done it, it would have had a join there and a join there. Um, but I'm not knocking Kitty Hawk, I love Kitty Hawk. So that's basically what I want to talk about. And for those of you that think I've been over clamping this and everything, let's just have a look in here. When this guy fits his wing, okay, he didn't glue the upper section on like I did, but look familiar? Big clamp on the front, clamps on the trailing edge, big clamp on the front. Clouts all along the edges of the wings. Look a little bit familiar? Yeah. And this is from Airfix themselves. And here he even talks about how imperative it, is, imperative it is to get this bulkhead in the right position in relation to the spar vertically. So, you know, that's exactly what I'm talking about. When I talk about the fairings, if you look at how these fairings here fit, they're not a very, a very nice fit out of the box. Um, he's done a lovely job down here. He also talks in here about the problem of gluing that when you glue the top wing on afterwards. And he did one side with glue and it sort of needed some clean up. The other side he glued that bit first. So um, there we go. You can also see on the back here is Airfix's model built. And you can see there's quite a large step there, which I didn't want. So I've just done my way of getting rid of it. And then there's no rivet detail along here. I've done my way of putting the rivet detail in. So all I'm doing, this is just the build of my kit, the way I want to build it. And, you know, what I'm doing is the way I go around it. Somebody else suggested I should be thinning this area out from the bottom, not from the top. Um, great suggestion. If you want to go and try that on your kit, I'd love to see how you get on. You'll also have to remove some material from the bottom of the bulkhead to make the fuselage sit lower down in the wing, which would be absolutely great until you come to fit the engine cowlings. So, um... You know, I'm just I'm just doing this with a bit of logic and that's the way it is. So um, moving forward, you can see I've got tape on here. The reason that tape is on there is so I can come along and I can sand and blend this fairing without damaging the detail on the wing. OK, this is like household masking tape rather than the expensive kabuki tape. In fact, if you want to get some, it's absolutely brilliant. You get it on Amazon frog tape um, and it is. Um, it's a special thin masking tape and it's very much, you can see the colour, it's very much like Tamiya tape and it's about five quid a roll and it's, it's very similar to Tamiya tape. So it's called Frog Tape Delicate Surface. Um, it sticks really, really well. It's really good stuff. I like it. So um, there we go. Um, and it's also tough so when you sand it, it can take the sanding, unlike ordinary masking tape that just all sort of, sort of lifts up, doesn't it? So there we go. I've got this fairing done. I've sanded it down. As you know, I scribed the, the panel lines in there. I picked out all the rivets. And as you can see, the rivets are looking a little more pronounced now, more like they are on the rest of the panel. What I've done, it's going to be very difficult to show you. I've got a 0 0.3 drill here. OK, and I've got a piece of brass. on. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a piece of brass tube and I've pressed over the drill. And left about, I don't know, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 mil sticking out of the end. And all I've got to do then is after I've made my pot mark, I come along with this drill and I go in and drill. And because that piece of brass is there, I can drill all day long and it will not go through. And it leaves a nice positive hole. Okay, which will get filled with paint or whatever. And then a wash will pick up in it beautifully. And then because it's quite nice and deep, when we come along and sand to blend, it doesn't matter. You're not going to sand it away. And as I say, with these lines, just keep going over them before you start sanding. I call it prescribing. That's what the doctor does for you. I call that prescribing. And then what happens is when you sand, you're sanding away the panel on top rather than sanding away the line and then trying to reestablish it all straight and everything. In there, I've got a drop of Mr. Surfacer. 
you can see in there, there's a drop of Mr. Surfacer in there. Just sand that away. This is a really knackered old floury skinny stick. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get some alcohol or some level of thinners on there and just to leave a bit of a panel line. But what I'm trying to get is a perfect fit of that fillet in there. And I'm trying to get the raised area because it's supposed to be raised. It's a step. I'm trying to get that raised area consistent all the way along. So that's why I'm sanding it now. I did most of the sanding and scraping, if you remember, I did that before. But um, the other thing I've done, I've mentioned this before, I've pulled this wing down so it's actually sitting on all the ribs. Okay, uh, now certainly this one, if you just glued it on, it wouldn't be sitting on the ribs. And if you squeezed it here, you would get a gap. You would also get a gap in the top of your wheel bay there, which I don't have. So everything is squeezed down nice and tight and everything's nice and fit in flush on the underside. Um, as you know, because we've got those bits of plastic card in there to support the wing. That's also inc made it incredibly strong. So we won't have to worry about the um, this joint here splitting because all you've got there is a butt joint. So if you don't get it really strong and you're, you've pulled it up, then one day it might just split open. Uh, the leading edge here, we've had some Mr. Surfacer in there. I've sanded that out. We've got Mr. Surfacer in there. I'm letting that dry off. Um, here, I think I damaged it with a clamp or something, but that little edge there was pushed back in slightly. So put some Mr. Surfacer in there. And then also you've got that funny join around the, I keep calling it the landing light. Somebody told me, thank you very much. It's actually the gun light. Um, but uh, when we come to do that, if I just show you in here what that area looks like. Uh, because I, sh I should have showed you before I put Mr. Servicer on there. You can see just down in there, you've got these two little lugs sticking up either side of the light. And they go up into a cutout in the, inner, in the um, fairing. So you've got this kind of seam that comes along and goes up. And I've just put some Mr. Servicer in there to get rid of that. So there we go. And if you remember these ones here, we pop marked and then drilled them out with a 0.8 drill. Just a couple of turns, just to get a bit of a, a mark there. And then afterwards, we'll put some Mr. Servicer in there and then scratch the screw head detail back. Or maybe not, we shall see. But basically, with that like that, we can now sand that. I can come in with a sponge, a thousand grit sponge, come in and just blend it all out. I'm not worried about losing any detail on the wing. And then when we remove the tape, all of these are the wing will still be there. I will probably paint along this edge carefully with some Mr. Surfacer and then remove it with a cotton bud just to make that edge lovely and soft, just as it would be in real life. So there we go. Um, the step that's there is probably bigger than it would be in real life. I mean, it's 24 scale. And if that steps, you know, 24 times bigger, it'll probably be something like that on the real thing. When it's not, it's probably the real step is probably, you know, a couple of millimeters. So, um, We've, we've left it accentuated, otherwise that one there will look daft. Okay, so you could always sand that one out if you wanted to, I guess. But um, anyway, so there we are. Right, so now we need to push forward this build. So as I say, I've shown you, I've done the drilling, I've shown that, I've shown the scribing. Is that a scratch there? No. I've shown the scribing, I've shown the drilling, I've shown the drilling up here. We've sanded all these fairings in, and now I think we've got what you would say is a lovely even small little step there which is exactly what i was after in the beginning okay so got the mr servicer now down that wing route both sides uh, i've sanded out the um the leading edges sort of this one's still a bit soft because it's quite thick in there so i'll leave that for a couple of days and then sand it then um no point in sanding mr servicer if it's soft because it just shrinks so you know you could use super glue in there if you wanted to but I'm not going to, I'm just going to push that Mr. Surfacer out of the way of that lamp because while it's soft, I can still push it rather than sand it. There we go. Um, the video I did for beginners the other day, all about seams, uh, somebody raised a question on there last night, which was a very good question. Could you use this for removing your Mr. Surfacer? So I've just done a test on a piece of scrap plastic and it didn't damage it at all. So that what we'll do is we'll give it a go on here. As you can see, I've done a little bit, and it does seem to work very, very well. Um, normally, I would use Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners, but the Tamiya Lacquer Thinners, you can use it. Just rub it over the Mr. Surfacer, and then it will soften it, and then we can just, with the cotton bud, just rub the Mr. Surfacer away. And what we're trying to do is leave a constant sort of fillet in the inside of, on the uh, fillet of the wing. 
sort of kind of comes down and then blends into the wing. There's no sort of constant gap or uh, no sort of um, gap or step there, as it were. And then obviously at the front here, we need to taper it off because it's got to blend in with the leading edge. And there we go, that's that done. So as you can see now, we have a nice consistent edge along there. And I'm looking at it and it looks like we could do with sanding a bit more off of the fairing there. And there we go. It does look a slightly higher here than it is back there. But yeah, that Tamiya lacquer thinner, the yellow top one, seems to work very, very well. So, um, I wanted to see how it would look with it like this. We'll just quickly do the other side. I'm sure you've all seen this before, but well, most of you will have, but some of you won't. So we just wet it just to soften it. Oh, we need to go up into that panel line there as well, don't we? Just to get the Mr. Surfacer out of there and leave a panel line behind. Do the same here. There we go. And then we're just going to run over the top here just like we did on the other side and remove the excess Mr. Surfacer to just leave us a tiny little fillet down in the bottom where the seam is. I'm going to change my cotton bud, get some fresh thinner And there we go. Job done. Just go over now and wipe away the, the excess. And then what we need to do is go over and where we've got any rivets that have got Mr. Surfacer in them is just touch them with the, the pointed tool just to re-establish them and that will be that done. And there you can see we've got again, once it's got a coat of paint on it it'll look bloody great. So there we go. Just a tip, I'd probably best not use this on this plastic. It has slightly softened it. I've noticed when I've gone on afterwards and put back in these scribe lines and any rivets that have been filled with Mr. Surfacer, I'm noticing that it feels quite soft when I'm pushing the pin into it. The plastic feels, you know, almost like the, um, the old blue, like grey plastic, the stuff I call blue tack. So probably best not use that, especially not on this plastic. So uh, there you go, you have been warned. Um, so to the, to the answer to the person that commented, it's probably going to be a no. <laughs> um, probably best not to use it. However, if you want to make nice rivets, brush over that first because it does make it it does make it go in. It's sort of nice and soft rather than sort of pushing up a raised edge. So there we are, all done. Happy with that. That can stay like that now. I've, I'm done with it. I've spent many an hour working on that root, wing root. So there we go. Right, and we're back. This is like two days later now. This is Christmas Eve. So. Um, I've decided I'm going to go for the box art, this one, uh, and not the American version. I'm not doing that one exactly. I'm doing, uh, where is it, version A. So it's that one there. 
with the stripes just going out because it'll be really interesting with the fin the tail flash you know around the, there and then we've got the um the black and white stripes as well i don't think i'm going to be trying to replicate the rough painted on finish like we've got in this book here that's the version i'm going to do that one there on the back of the uh back of this lovely book that uh that wendy got me um but there are some pictures in here there we go of them of them actually painting the stripes on by hand i'm not going to attempt to do that because i think it's going to be very very difficult to accurately get you can see here how rough it is uh, and i've thought about doing things like you know tearing the masking tape or literally brush painting it on but um i think it'd be a shame on such a beautiful model i think it'd be a shame i think if i'm going to do that it's something i should try on like the you know the, the Ravel 130 second kit which is about 20 quid I think that would be the best uh, the best bet for that so anyway or maybe even do it on my old hobby boss one I built maybe give that a go we'll see what we get on um but I decided to go for that so I had to decide because I had to paint in these wells here where the radiators go and inside these so now that the wing is all permanently fixed and all fared in and everything and we've got the super glue and the glue and the plastic card down in there to strengthen things up then uh we're ready to push forward so I um, painted inside of these and then I've gone over the radiators with some oil. If you remember there were ejector pin marks in there, we can just see, because we have a slight sheen on this, the colours I'm using. People are asking me to show them stuff. So then, these are the colours for this aircraft. I'm using Tamiya paints. Um, basically these are the colours. XF81, XF82 and XF83. Okay. Uh, you've got the green, that's for the, the, the top, that's the grey for the top, and then this is the grey for the underside. And these three paints, Tamiya actually uh, developed and brought out when they brought out their 30 second scale Spitfire that we all know and love. You know, one of the, one of the if not the best plastic kit on the planet. Um, so, I've decided to use those paints, so that's what I've used. So underneath here, we have XF83 airbrushed on, and also inside there. And as I say, you can just see... Here, there's a bit of roughness in the paint. There was a great big hair in there, and I pulled it out, and it left a bit of a dodgy finish. But when you actually look at these, um, this is the starboard one. So when you actually look at these, when you look inside, although you've got ejector pin marks and stuff in there, you can't actually see any of it. You can't see inside there really at all. So I'm not really too worried about the finish. I just wanted to get the colour in there. Um, the worst ones were on the sides here. There were ejector pin marks, if you remember, in the sides, and I didn't see them. So remember to get rid of them if you're building this. Let's get the light a bit better here. Um, so the oil's in there now. I've used this one here. This is the Modeler's World Black Oil Wash, okay, which is the one I always use. Um, and I've used the black rather than the industrial dirt. And then with the cotton bud, I can just rub over it and just remove the excess and it'll give us a nice finish on the radiator, as you can see. So it shows up the radiator grill. And then if I pinch the end of the cotton bud, like so, get it into a sharp corner, we can get into the corners and get out of there. And you see, this is one of the problems with Tammy and matte paint. If you don't clear coat it first, the oil does kind of stain it. So we'll have to get in there with some odorless thinners and get, it, get rid of it. Do the same on here, just rub over there. And all we're trying to do is remove the oil from the raised surface of the silver. So that gives us like a, the, the radiator finish and all the edges and everything stick out, you can see there. And uh, as I say, for what you're gonna see of it, you, you may see that I'm not making too much fuss. It's because you can't really see any of it. Now this area in here, when I want to get rid of this black, I'll just show you for a future reference. I wouldn't necessarily bother with it on this particular part. But if you grab some odorless thinners, not enamel thinners, some odorless thinners, pinch the end of the cotton bud, get the cotton bud damp, but right, it's wet, and then we're going to remove some of it on here. You can get into that corner and because it's got the thinners on it will remove the wash a lot easier. Okay, so there we go. So we can just let that dry and then just 
rub over the area on the front again and then anything you've removed with the thinner is it'll push it'll push the wash back into it so there we go and if I wanted to go over this radiator with the cotton bud with the with the thinners on it you can see it removes a lot more and it makes it a lot sort of brighter I'm not pushing very hard at all so I'll do the same on that one I think I'll look, look at that better There's our bright finish. Right, so it's time to get these glued on. Now I masked these before I painted them so that I didn't get paint on there, on the uh, mating faces. And on here, I've actually scraped the paint away. So what we're gonna do is get this to go down. This is the starboard one, so that's that side. There we go. And the other thing I've done on these, you can see I've got the numbers on there in black marker pen. But I'm not actually sure if enamel thinners will take that marker pen off. Where's the one I was just using? Oh, never mind. But we'll get that off. Um, and I've, you can see where I've put it on between the rivets so that I can get it all off because otherwise it will come through the paint. I don't suggest you use marker pen on your models at all. But I wanted to mark them because I wasn't sure if they had a slight different angle in them. So these radiators are weird. If you if you've got the Tamiya kit, you try and cross them over, there is such a small difference that it would be easy to um, to mix them up. So I'm going to grab some extra thin. And I'm just going to tap it there. Tap it there. Tap it there. And tap it there. And just let it capillary around. And dry do the same on this side again no paint on there that's all cleaned off you can see also I've painted these hot air vents silver just for, I think they to be honest I think they probably would have been the same color as the rest but uh, it's just adding a bit of interest in it, a bit of difference in the colors and stuff so just tap it there tap it there tap it there and tap it there. There we go. So that's gone in. Now we're going to need some Mr. Surfacer down in there. Just to make that because the, the actual flange part has been moulded as part of the wing. And this part is moulded separately. You can see I don't have a very perfect fit in there. Which I don't understand why. Because I built these up and put them in the wing. So I don't really know what's going on there. It looks like that one wants to be held down. Very strange. What we'll have to do is put some Mr. Surface in and then very lightly sand it. Um, so I get rid of that step. I'll do it all the way around, I'll do it on all of them. Just so that it looks like one rather than lots of separate pieces. There we go. So we'll leave that to dry. And then uh, we can come back in and put some, some Mr. Surfacer in there. Just want to show you another little trick with this, um, this VMS glue. This is the VMS Black Thin. It's absolutely wonderful stuff. I've got a drop here in my Pringles lid. What I'm doing, I'm just running it around here. Letting it wick into this joint. And then that will give us a nice basis. It, it will not only help stick it in. Who misses? But it will, um, it will also act as a kind of filler because, as we all know, Mr. Servicer likes to shrink. And if you've got a big gap, <laughs> who misses? <laughs> if you've got a big gap like this, when you put the Mr. Servicer in it, it'll just keep on shrinking. And then when you finally apply your primer, it'll just shrink again. So you put this in there and it, it sort of makes it almost flush. And then we get a cotton bud and just wipe over. Because it's a slow drying glue and because it's black, you can see where it's gone. It's absolutely magic stuff. You can see I've done it in there. 
uh, and we're going to be sanding this joint anyway so it doesn't really matter about any excess if you're intending to go over the cotton bud to leave the, the panel line behind like i've shown you before don't use this don't use super glue in there and wipe it over because it will um you'll get the residue left on the surface you can always lightly sand it but uh as you can see I mean, we had that gap there and it's uh it's filled that beautifully filled that really really nicely so um We'll let that dry, let these let, let that glue dry off, the plastic cement that's in there and the super glue, take the clamps off, and then we can get in there with Mr. Servicer and sand it all flat. And it'll be a, a two-minute job because there's nothing really much left for the Mr. Servicer to do because there's uh, there's a load of super glue in there now. So we could just put another drop on top. Just like so. So obviously this is the uh, Mr. Superglue. The superglue is obviously wicked in and left a little indentation. So there we go. And then once again, cotton bud. Just give it a wipe. Job done. It's looking great. So really pleased with that. I'll let that dry. <laughs> Story of my life. And uh, and then we'll come back to it. And so we've got some Mr. Surfacer in there now. So we'll let that dry and uh, see how it's looking. We basically want to get that sort of fared out look rather than it look like separate pieces. Um, looking at the propeller, if you remember I did the propeller oh, about a week ago, I think, four days, five days ago, I mean, anyway. And I sprayed the tips and they look to me a little bit too bright. They, this is the Tamiya LP8 and they look just too bright. So what I want to do is just darken it up a bit. So I've, I've made this colour here. You can see there's the ordinary yellow. And then next we've got this one which is just slightly darker. It's, and I did notice in the Airfix instructions they call for this trainer yellow rather than just yellow. Um, so what I've got is like 25 parts LP8 to one part LP51. It's just a tiny drop of orange just to take that brightness away. So that's what I'm going to do. So we've got that little bit in there mixed up. It's only a small drop, but that's going to do us for our um, for our propeller blades and for the wing leading edges so um i think they are yes they are yellow so uh that's what i'm going to be using that for so i'm going to give them a quick quick once over now with the darker yellow They'll use literally a brush full of that if, if that um and then just see how much better it looks yeah for sure that's much better so uh i'm much happier with that how that looks it's that sort of darker but if you can see it's just slightly darker than that so I'm happy with that now right so that was about 25 parts LP8 you know 20 to 20 to 30 parts LP8 to one part LP51 just to take that edge in edge edge edginess off uh, edge off it that's what we're looking for so there we go so we'll let that dry now for another couple of days and then we'll mask it and do the uh do the actual the black on there so now I'm kind of scratching around for stuff to do while this um well, this all sorts itself out because we're getting close to be able to start looking at getting this wrapped up i think um obviously i don't want to be fitting parts that are going to get broken off i'll tell you what we could start doing is the wing tips isn't it i didn't do the wing tips before because i wanted to be able to clamp the wings up to get this joint nice here so uh yeah we'll do that now we'll do the uh, we'll have a look at the wing tips all right we're back so it's been Ooh, uh, what is it today? It's the 27th of December, so it's a good couple of days since we last touched it. So later on in this video, I think we'll get this propeller all painted up, which will look great. Um, so uh, what we're going to do, just talk about comments from the last part I've put up. Somebody commented, Brendan, about one millimeter wide weld beads. Um, they're not one millimeter wide, Brendan. They're nothing like... Um, they're, they're squashed down, so they look like wider, but they're they're made from like... 0.1 I think 0.2 uh, stretch sprue so there we go they're very very faint to be honest um, and I'm probably going to sand them away even more so they're even fainter because they were never actually that pronounced but it looks like I've already sanded that one a bit too much anyway but um, we shall see they'll look great when they're done um, and remember if you are doing this with the with the exhaust if you are adding the the welds and you tend to sand a bit and lose some off of there just make sure you put that one at the back and have your best one at the front because basically they will because they go like that they kind of hide each other so remember that 
Right, um, so we said we're going to look at these wingtips. So we've got the wingtips off the sprue. Now again, I don't know if I'm going to catch this in the light, but you need to be very, very careful. Move this light forward. You need to be very, very careful of these raised edges. And if you could just see that, there's raised edges on these. In fact, if I grab a marker, and yes, I will always tell you not to use a marker, use a pencil, but I use a marker so that you can see it. And then I make sure I clean it up. Um, if I lightly sand, you can see on here where I've sanded some lumps by the ejector pin marks, but the actual flat surface of the wingtip isn't sanded. So make sure you get some pen on there or some pencil or whatever. I would use pencil, not pen, and then sand so that all the pencil disappears and then you know you're nice and flat. Same on this one here. That one in the middle doesn't really matter, I don't think, because I think they're sort of dished in the middle. Yeah, they're dished around. Oh, it's a bit. That one in the middle doesn't matter, but the rest of them certainly do. So we're just going to get on there, slightly sand over there. As you can see, I'm sanding away and it's removing a line around the ejector pin mark, but leaving the surface raised. So we're just going to sand that nice and flat so we get a nice, good flat surface to join onto. And that is that one. So again, we've got the ejector pin marks back here. These actually look better. But we'll have a look anyway. Yeah, you can see again, lumps, raised areas around the ejector pin marks. I think basically the rule of thumb with this kit is everywhere you've got an ejector pin mark where you're going to be gluing parts together, sand it. Um, because you get, otherwise you're going to end up with issues with gaps and stuff. So there we go. We should get a beautiful, yeah, we've got a lovely seam on there now. So we can get that glued together. Now, sometimes I would suggest gluing this part in and then gluing the underside on after. And then, you know, get rid of the location tabs. And then glue the underside in after because that seam there is a lot easier to work with, it's harder to work with than, than this one here. So if you get this all lovely here, and then you've got a horrible seam there, it's no good. So basically what I would suggest in some instances, test fit it, put it on, see how it fits. We can see the top fits lovely. We can see the bottom fits lovely, so we can actually glue this together and glue it on. But if you find that when you put the top on, you've got a huge step in the bottom, I mean, one way of doing it is come along with a sanding stick and sand, in fact, get something hard. Who misses? Get something hard and just sand it like that in one direction. Just take away any unevenness. Get it together and you can see you can get a lovely, lovely join on there. Okay. And also, if you look here, you can fit your... Your cropped wing wing tips as well. They're made in clear, so you can just leave the uh, the nav light bit. God, that was a tight fit in there. It didn't want to come out now. So that's if you can do your crop wing. But with these, you've got the that going like that, and then the clear part going in. So what I would suggest is we build these up as a unit with the clear part and everything, and then plop them in. Now I've been looking because sometimes with model aircraft you have a clear lens over the uh, light and the light is actually a coloured bulb within a clear lens. With these, it's not like that. I had a look on the. I thought I'd have a look on the one. This build here, but it looks like he forgot to put them in. There's no. You can see there. there there's no nav lights put in the wing, so it looks like that was a bit of an omission, or maybe those parts weren't available at that point. But uh, there we go. But looking at actual um, reference pictures, I think there's a couple in here. Uh, I did see one. There we go. You can see a picture there. And the light is actually a coloured lens. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if there's another one here. No, we can't see it. But the light is actually a coloured lens. There's the um, cropped one. You can see it's just the lens on the very front edge there. It's, uh, so they've made it in clear. So there we go. So that's what we can do here. Um, so we're going to get these glued together. So 
what I'm tempted to do is just put a drop of extra thin into these holes here. In fact, I'm going to brush some around there as well. So as you can see how quick it dries, let's get some of this one on there. Let's get some of this, the white glue. I was watching one of Ron's videos last night. Ron from the model ship. And he was saying, he was using this white glue. And the brush you get with that white glue is really, really fat. In fact, where is it? Where is the brush? Here's one here. So you can see these parts out of the way in case it drips. You can see that when you get when you get this white glue, the brush is absolutely massive, and that's great for brushing it over large areas. But if you want to get into small areas, like I just did, then what I do is get when I've got an empty Tamiya jar, just pull that unit off of the head, and then plug it into there. So then you've got a thin brush to use in your white glue. That's how I do that. Okay, and then I've left some pen on there, so that, that might cause us an issue. The thing I say about pen is it will always come through your paint. So, right, so now what we can do is the Phil Flory method. I always try and credit people where it's due if I've learnt something off of someone else. This is how Phil Flory does his trailing edges and stuff. If we can just give that a squeeze. And then we can do the leading edge the same. And the thing is, if you go like that and you spill some, it runs down the side and ruins your surface finish. So this is the Phil Flory way, which works really well. But what I will often do with full size wings and stuff, you'll see me go along and I will actually put it in like so and let it capillary around. Because then I can see where it's going. So we can squeeze that, rub your fingers, squeeze it, rub your fingers, squeeze it, rub your fingers. Just like so. And then we can see that that is all glued together. And I can see that I've got a bit of a gap going there. So we'll just get that glued up. And there we are. And I'm going to run some around the trailing edge as well. Even though I've just shown you the Phil Flory method, I'm going to use my method without too much glue on the brush and just make sure that we've got good capillary action going in there. One other thing I've noticed with these wing tips, if you are fussy about your model, I've noticed that the riveting just sort of fades in and out and kind of disappears around the edge here. You can see a slight example of it there. Just before the wing light, you can see this sort of just fades down to nothing. So what I do is I take a pointed tool and just pick up where the rivet should be and just make a little sharp indentation and then when we sand the leading edge we won't lose that detail. Okay, I found the same all around here. You can see, here we go, you can see there's one there which is very light, there's one there which is very light. So just pick up on the light ones. And then if we do any sanding, we won't lose them. You can see here, there's one there that's very light. It's almost like the, the little, in, the little um, lump on the tool that makes the rivet is broken off. And this is another reason why I say if, you're gonna, if a new kit comes out and you want it, get it as soon as you can. Because tooling doesn't last forever. little lump of something I've dropped some glue on it and it's on the bloody top as well I should have to repair that I don't know where that's come from I really don't is it on the surface or in the plastic yes eating itself into the plastic drop it the surface or sand that down that'll be fine I don't know where that's come from Probably come off of that brush there. So anyway, right, let's do the uh, same on this side. I'll get this side glued together and then I'll come back. Right, so um, we've got our wing tips here. I've done some Mr. Service around the edges. We'll let that dry and then we'll sand that out. Thinking I should have put the wing tip lights in first, but uh, never mind. 
Um, so just looking at doing this propeller, we've got to mask off the yellow bits I did. If you remember a little while ago, that was like three days ago, four days ago for me. So we've got to mask them off. Looking on the um, instructions, they have here very nicely, Airfix have put in their specific um, masking di dimensions. So here we've got 4.2 millimeters for the uh, tips of the actual propeller. And then here you can see we've got eight millimeters for the stripes here and 10.5 millimeters for the stripes here. And what I do, I used my I use my Infini Easy Cutting Mat to make the correct width strips. And you can see here I've got one 10.5 and eight. Now you would think, wouldn't you, um, if you take if you need 10.5, you just go. I don't know. What, what, take a what, what is 10.5 uh, divisible by and 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 do that. Um, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way because I think the way they've done this, these actually grow slightly wider. So you can see here, I've got point A, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 times point A is, uh, well 10 times point A is 8, and then 2 times point A is 1.6. So that would actually be 9.6, but it actually works out to 10.5. And I've actually made tape and scaled it out across the wing to make sure it all scales out exactly the same here. And the same on the back, you know, to make sure it ends up 42 mil. Here it ends up with 52 mil. Done that all properly. Now, when it comes to the um, tips here, they're saying 4.2 millimeters. I don't know where they've got that from, but I'm going to trust them. So what I found is 4.2 millimeters is one. Two, one, two, three, four times 0.9 gives us 4.2 millimeters approximately. We're, you know, we're not looking at it's somewhere between four and four and a half millimeters. But you can see I've got 4.2 millimeters on here. And you can see there we've got roughly the right amount. So, and then I've cut them off into lengths so we can just pick up these corners. And then what we can do is grab that bit of masking tape and then put this as square as we can see by eye over the over the tip of the propeller and we want this one edge to be basically level with that edge there and then we want to get the tape looking down on it as square as we can okay and then just push it down and then what I'm going to do is fold the back over fold the other side over and lay it down on top exactly on top of that one and then we know we've got it nice and parallel front to back and then give it a squeeze in there just to make sure that it's nice and tight down in that seam you could give it a little fold over if you want whatever and then do the same on this one come along like that put that on there Just like so, nice and square, and then fold that over. Come on, fold that over, lay on top of that one so it's dead flush with the edge, and then we'll have the same top and bottom. Pinch the edges, make sure they're all in nice and tight. And there we go. So they're all in nice and tight. So now we've got our 4.2 millimeters. Just to make sure, what I'm going to do is get a bit of masking tape and just come over the end like that because we've got that bit of masking tape sort of flush with the tip. But if you've left a little bit of the tip exposed, the black paint will show up on it like a sore thumb because it's bright yellow. So just do that over the tip just to make sure. And then when we're spraying, we're going to spray very, very lightly over the masking tape and spray in that direction or at least at 90 degrees to it so that we don't blow the tape under on the leading and training edges of the blade. So there we are. Simple as that. A little bit of tape just over the top like that. Like so. Making sure it doesn't go over where the mast edge is. Come over. The back just to make sure we keep the tape off of the very tip of the propeller. So... There we go, I'll see you in a minute. All right, looking back at these wing tips again, I want to get these lights in because we're going to have to do some work on fitting. They're not actually a very good fit. Um, they've got a bit of a gap around them, it looks like. So I think what we'll do is get them glued in. 
Now, normally I would paint the back of these like silver, and then when you put the clear red on, they'd be really, really bright. But I'm not going to do that on this occasion because looking at thick pictures, it looks like, unless the light is on, it looks like a very dark piece of, um, I should think it's a piece of perspex, which is blow molded or whatever, but, um, or indeed vac formed. But uh, I think what we'll do is leave them like this and just glue them in and then we'll, we'll put a lot of the, the clear red on them and then mask off the lens and when we paint the model they'll be, uh, they'll be there. But it's not a particularly lovely fit. Now I just want to make sure I've got the right one. This is X5 and X5 is going into the port wingtip and this is the port wingtip. So that is correct. Um, we need to make sure we get the right way round. So that it's facing forward, right. Oops, it does not want to stay in there. I think what I'm going to do is put a drop of extra thin in there. And then drop this lamp in there, make sure you get the right way around. There's hardly anything to hold. Just drop that in there and then we can, because it's got the, the extra thin there just to sort of nip it in place, we can play with it and push it around just like shit, just like so, just like so, um, but not, make sure we don't get our fingers on there because the glue will capillary out from the joint and probably mess up the surface. So at the end of the road if it does it can all be sanded and dealt with, there's only a plastic model at the end of the day. But best to try and avoid as much work as we can. Right, so I'm going to get under my optivisor to make sure I've got that along the centre line. See you in a minute. Right, so the lights are fitted now and I've gone around with Mr Surfacer. They really aren't a very nice fit at all. One of them camera which was I think it's this one which is the no it was this one wasn't it? the starboard side it was very thin um, compared to the wing I kind of wondered if maybe the wing was a little fat but I don't think it is it kind of it looks good on the when it's actually placed up against the wing so I don't know it, it's like it's very very thin so it needs it needs building up so I've just built it up with Mr. Surfacer um, if I was to do that again I would probably use Molly clear come here mr unprepared i would probably use it doesn't want to come out the pot this this is clear sprue glue now somebody said to make this and try it a long long time ago and then somebody else was saying the other day apparently clear plastic is pure styrene i don't know but apparently the clear stuff makes very very good sprue glue so bear that in mind um, whether that's correct or not, I know, please comment below. Um, so thinking about it, I should have perhaps gone round with that and let that dry. That would have been harder to sand out, I guess. But uh, we have to do some blending round here. I think we'll use a cotton bud initially with some thinners and then sand the shape into it. But um, yeah, quite a, quite a bad fit. I don't know if you can see on there. It's, it's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of Mr. Servicer in there. So that's them, and that could be why they've been missed out on the um, on the kit. Maybe he's working on making some bigger ones or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, there's a little something for the aftermarket there. So um, we've got the propeller mast, and I've got a couple of Lancaster bits to spray black as well. So I think what we'll do is we'll do the propeller, um, and then I think I might call it a day for this video because. I can't really, I can't go start painting. I, I suppose I could start doing the stripes. My plan is with these stripes is to spray the stripes first, or at least do one color first, maybe all black, because black makes a great undercoat for white. Um, so I might do them all black first and then mask off that area before we do any more painting. Um, or I may just do all the stripes and then mask them off. That way you don't have to worry about masking the whole thin off when you do your stripes. You also get a really nice sharp edge, uh, which the paint will go on. It, 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 it will look really nice. 
Now I know before you all start shouting that the actual these were painted on with a brush so the edges shouldn't be nice and straight. Therein lies a problem. If you try and recreate the mess that was done in real life, I think all you're going to do is make them look a mess in 24th scale. So I think the best thing to do is do them nice and straight and just go from there. I mean, the early, they weren't invasion stripes, were they? they were identification stripes on um, typhoons. They were always, well, the pictures I've got in books, wartime pictures, they were nice and straight. So who knows? Um, but I'm going to do mine nice and straight. The first thing I'm going to do is that stripe over there, which will be painted in and then masked off. And then we'll do these under here and, uh, and go from there. So um, I don't really think I can get on with that now, though, can I? So I think what I'll do is get the propeller sprayed, get this these couple of Lancaster parts painted, and then uh, and then we'll go from there. All right. So if you've just watched, or if you won't have seen, but part thirty-two of the Lancaster build, I've just actually painted that. That's the back of the rear turret, so or the front of the rear turret, should you say? So now we've got uh, Mr. Surfacer um, black, and I'm going to give the propeller a coat. I'm going to spray the inside of the spinner. I'm going to spray the inside the inside of the spinner back plate there. And then we're going to do that engine front cover there, give that a coat of black primer, and then we can do the green afterwards. So, um, first thing I want to show you is before I do this in the booth, because I'm not going to do all this on camera because of the stink. Um, when, we, when we come to do the tips, just before you do any painting, just come along and give it an extra little squeeze down just to make sure anything that's lifted up is pushed back down. Always do this with masking because, especially if you've left it overnight, quite often it will lift in certain areas and then when we actually come to spray these blades we'll do a little test on here I'm going to spray very lightly kind of away from the masking tape okay so I'm not I'm not going to have a hard edge I'll have a nice soft edge and when I say that I'll have a nice straight edge to the eye it'll be straight into a magnifying glass it'll look spotty but we won't have that line, the, the step you get from the masking tape. If you spray away like that, it's a good way of avoiding that line. Okay, so just spray. Make sure you get black on there. You want it black. And make sure you get the leading edge and the trailing edge as well. So, I don't know if I can show you here, just gently, if I just, you should be able to see there, you get like a kind of soft edge, and the more paint you put down, the harder it gets. And there we go. So. I'll do the rest of this in the booth because uh, do all this here as well. I'm not really sure if all this needs to be painted if it can be seen through the spinner, but uh, whatever. Some people say I don't do enough airbrushing on my videos. Well, it's basically because I tend to use lacquer paints and the stink, and I don't like putting the camera in the booth. It's it's not easy. And you can see me there, very, very light coats, just basically, just to get the colour built up, and then you don't lose any of your detail. So I'll get the rest of this done now in the booth, and then I'll come back and say goodbye, I think. And there we go, all done, and a few more bits as well. I've done the inside of the gun bay doors, because they're going to be done in an aluminium colour, silver colour, so... And also enables me to see the remains of the ejector pin marks, so I can deal with them as well, so... It's always a good idea to get things primed. It's got stuck back on my blue tax actually. I need to replace my blue tack. It's become it's about four years old and it needs it's, it's so loaded with paint it's losing its stickiness. Uh, these uh, are the panels or the mounts for the panels that go on the side of the engine. Uh, something I picked up from that lovely book that Wendy got me is that these are one side is thicker than the other. You can see here on your right this one is thicker than that one and it's about uh, 0.8 of a millimetre I think I have measured it the thing is I'm not sure if it's on the inside or the outside I need to do some more to measurement but um, my concern is that if this is 
as you can imagine when you look along the top edge here you can see you can see here that this piece here okay is much wider than that piece there you can see it's about 0.8 millimeter wider so if it's wider that way out then when I fit this to the engine the upper cowling won't fit it will push the side cowling out too far so do we need to remove plastic from the inside or the outside I don't know so I've painted them black just give them a very quick coat of black so that you can see when we do this on camera in probably the next part you can see what I'm actually doing where I'm moving plastic from now these holes here these are where the Zeus fasteners go that hold all panels on and they would be holes anyway so I'm probably going to drill them out and that way, that way it won't matter if we work on like that side or that side and the other thing I'm intending to do is use some stretch sprue uh, and make some pins on the side panels so that when they go on they'll have so you can see we've got all these cutouts so that when they go on they will have a really positive location and not just fall off I was talking earlier about having the, the sides attached to the top but then of course we will be able to lift it off because the exhaust would be in the way so what I'm thinking is using a couple of bits of stretch sprue so we're staying with the um, we're staying with the out of the box theme and just sort of have one there one there and one down the bottom and just have a little pin on the back but just just enough you pick the model up and shake it they'd probably fall off but it'll just be enough to hold them on uh, and stop them falling off so otherwise I would use magnets but this is an out of the box build so um, the propeller is looking lovely we can see on the back all those seam lines disappeared it's worth doing the work and waiting around and doing your rubbing down and everything and letting it all sink and sort itself out before you give it a final coat of paint but uh, happy with how that's come out some of you may be asking why didn't I paint it silver and chip it because the pictures I've got of Spitfires I haven't seen any with particularly bad propellers so they probably a little bit of a dry brush and maybe a few chips on the leading edges but nothing more than that I don't see pictures of them all really beaten battered so um so there we go, and obviously the spinner innards there and the back plate there, that's obviously going to be painted green. This here I think should be silver on the inside. We shall see how much can be seen, but basically when the spinner goes on, like that, and you've got the props in there, you're not going to see anything in there anyway, so not really too worried about that. Uh, so there we go guys, I'm going to call that a day for this one because I'm going to have to wait forever for these to dry, so I can at least get a video up. Um, so thank you for watching and I'll see you back for part 13 when we'll get the wingtips glued on and do some more Mr. Servicer work no doubt. In the meantime I'll get all this done and fared out so that you can see how much the Mr. Servicer is sinking there look where it's such a poor fit. Um, so I'll get some more Mr. Servicer on there get it all sanded out you don't want to watch me do that and we'll get all that looking lovely. Um, and as I say in the next video we'll get them on and we'll also start looking at these because I want to start dry fitting the um, all the cowling and everything together and I want to get this here glued to the front of these so I can sort of put this on as a one piece frame um, rather than have to mess around with having it all glued up and then paint touching up paintwork. Okay so uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon for part 13. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have please hit the like button and um, if you haven't already please hit the subscribe and uh, hit the notifications bell and you'll know when I've got new videos coming. Thank you for watching. Goodbye for now. I'll see you all later. Bye.